Well, next to the continuing debate over fracking or the use of high-pressure water pumps to search for natural gas, the argument for is that Ireland could get a supply of cheap energy and there could be a significant boost to the economy in terms of jobs and investment. The anti-fracking campaigners, however, say the economic value is often overstated and the potential environmental damage could be huge. In a few minutes, we'll tease out those points in a little more detail. First, Katie Hannan reports from Sligo Leitrim. There are very dubious gains and there are very definite and very appalling losses. I think it is fair to say that over the last 10 years, it has revolutionized uh, the prospects for gas. It's untested science. They don't know what they're doing. 99% of these wells are drilled without problems. Our energy needs are enormous. Our lifestyle and our economy depend on a secure source of affordable gas and oil. Now we're told we have vast reserves of natural gas right here. But there's a catch. The only way to get it out of the ground is through the controversial process of fracking. Three companies have gained licenses to explore for this unconventional gas in Ireland. But so far, just one man has put his head above the parapet. Since last summer, Richard Moorman of Tamboran Resources has regularly commuted from his base in Canada for media appearances or public presentations in a concerted campaign to convince the public, the regulator and the body politic that they have nothing to fear from fracking. Well, I, I can't ask you to trust me any more than you can throw me, but we don't intend to sell out Ireland. But it is in conference rooms like this one right across the northwest that industry may be losing the battle for the hearts and minds of the people. Tonight's meeting is just the latest in a string of events organized by the growing number of protest groups set up in this region, all with one aim in mind, to keep fracking out of Ireland. Fracking or hydraulic fracturing is the process of injecting water, sand and chemicals at high pressure into horizontally drilled wells in order to liberate gas and oil from shale rock. But most of those gathering here in Sligo are well aware of what this process entails. They have come to hear testimony from Alberta in Canada, the front line of fracking. Jessica Ernst is a former oil and gas industry consultant who is suing the biggest energy company in Canada for allegedly contaminating her water supply through fracking. I live in a frac experiment and I have done for almost 10 years. They started in my community in around the year 2001. Began noticing very painful caustic burns to my skin after bathing, but I, but I didn't put two and two together because in Canada we grew up thinking we'd always have safe, infinite water. And it wasn't until one day I poured fresh water for my dogs and they backed away from the water and then I thought, they've been lying to us. In Canada denies liability. It has stated that the water quality issues were predominantly due to naturally occurring methane, poor water well construction and maintenance issues. Incana firmly believes Ms. Ernst's claims are not supported by the facts and her lawsuit is without merit. Back home, the debate on the merits or otherwise of allowing fracking in Ireland has intensified since Tamboran Resources put some numbers on the project. And those numbers are impressive. 2.2 trillion cubic feet of gas enough to supply Ireland's gas needs for 12 years. 600 jobs directly from the drill project in Leitrim alone, with 2,400 knock-on jobs created in the booming local economy. All of this would generate almost 5 billion in corporate exploration and employment taxes. But estimates of gas reserves have had to be slashed by the industry in the US in recent months. And there is skepticism about the scale of the reserves estimated here. Reserves of oil and gas, generally speaking, they're very, that information is very tightly controlled, you know, and confidential, so I'd be, I'd certainly want some independent verification of that. Until you actually drill a well and, and, and test it, you'll never know. Uh, but it's, it's, it's certainly true that um, in the US, over the past 20 years, uh, gas production has dramatically increased because of shale gas. So. People are successfully fracking uh, oil wells in the States and, and, and producing vast amounts of gas. If there's a bonanza there which can lower the cost of energy in Ireland, we should all be delighted. But at the moment we don't know whether there is or there isn't, but 
we should at least take a few steps to find out. There have been wildly exaggerated numbers of jobs put out. I mean, when Tamborne came in first, the story was 600 jobs, both north and south. Now, all of a sudden, that has changed without any of the figures having changed for the amount of gas or anything like that. While jobs would be welcome in a region with high unemployment and poor alternative prospects, campaigners believe the price to be paid would simply be too high. If it can be done without any environmental damage, okay, wouldn't we all be delighted if we could extract gas, if we could use it and if it could be safe? The unconventional gas industry is currently locked in a mammoth global public relations battle. Social media has given anti-fracking campaigners an unprecedented ability to spread the word that fracking pollutes air and drinking water. The Oscar-nominated documentary Gasland, which showed domestic water supplies so contaminated with methane gas that they could be set alight, has greatly helped their cause. The industry hit back with an impressively produced infomercial accusing the movie of getting its facts wrong. More may be known when the Environmental Protection Agency in the US releases a major report on fracking later this year, while the Irish government awaits a report from the University of Aberdeen. I mean, there are lots of reports around already. I can, I can download half a dozen of them now that tell you that it's perfectly safe. We don't need another report to say that all those other wells have been drilled without problems because we know they've been drilled without problems. It's factual. Do you believe, as an engineer, it is possible to engage in hydraulic fracturing safely? I wouldn't like to, I, I, probably yes, but I wouldn't like to preempt the reports that are coming out. I mean, I believe it would be unwise to take any decision in advance of evidence being presented to us. Much of the environmental concern internationally has focused on the mix of chemicals or fracking fluid used in the process. Here, Tamborn raised eyebrows by stating it would frack without chemicals. The pledge we're making to use no chemicals extends to everything we touch or anybody who works for us. More recently, the company has acknowledged that it will need to use some chemicals in the drilling process. But protesters say that even chemical-free fracking would carry major environmental hazards and leave a massive industrial footprint in an area of great scenic beauty. There are oil and gas fields in the south of England uh, near uh, Witch Farm uh, where you know they, they, they have them on a little island and uh, they grow a couple of hedges around them and you know people drive past them every day don't even know they're there. You can't actually exploit something like this without paying some price. Ultimately, it's a political decision at the end of the day as to whether that price is worth paying or not. The problem with the situation we are looking at now is that there are very dubious gains and there are very definite and very appalling losses. You cannot sacrifice everything. And we're talking about sacrificing everything here. We're talking about sacrificing our water, our land and our communities. For what? Katie Hannan reporting with me now in the studio is Tony Allwright, an oil and gas engineer with Tolwright Limited. And from Carrick and Shannon, I'm joined by Canadian environmental campaigner you saw in that report, Jessica Ernst. She's in Carrick tonight for a rally organised by No Fracking Ireland, and she's just stepped out of that meeting to talk to us. Um, Tony Allwright, could you stake your professional reputation on, on this and say that fracking is 100% safe? It's 100% safe if it's done correctly. Uh, the, the technology is very, very old. Uh, there um, uh, seems to be some argument that it's a new technology. No, it isn't. I have here a report that I wrote myself in, in January 1975 about a fracking operation in the, in the jungles of Nigeria. So it's, it's, it's a very well-established technique. We know how to do it. Uh, we know how to control the fluids. Um, how easy is it to get it wrong? Uh, it's, it's as easy to get wrong as it is to leave out a few roof tiles in a house you're building, or it's as easy as building a priory hall. If you do a cowboy job, yes, indeed, you may get leaks in it, but there's no reason. You, you, don't, you don't stop building houses because somebody's built one or two bad ones. So it comes what you do is you, 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 you carry out the technique and you do it properly according to the well-proven, well-known uh, procedures. Well, why then are they so unhappy about it that they uh, have banned it, at least for now, in France, in Bulgaria, why there's difficulty with it in the United States, and why you have protests up and down the United States and now in Ireland too? 
I, I think that's that, that's a good question, and um, my immediate response is, is is probably that the industry has, and it's, this, is, this is typical of the oil industry, it is absolutely pathetic at selling itself, at telling people what it's doing and how it's doing it, and spreading confidence. It tends tends to explain itself only when it's in trouble, and by then, of course, it's too late. We need to be more proactive uh, and explain it. There, there are protests because people don't know what fracking is. It's, uh, well, it's a new word, such a new word that it's, it's even spelt wrongly. It's not supposed to have a K in it. All right. Well, let's go to Jessica um, Ernst. Because and, she, and, and people, yeah. All right. I want to bring in Jessica Ernst. Okay. I'll come back to you. Jessica Ernst, uh, thank you for talking to us tonight in, in Carrick. You have direct experience of this in your own uh, home patch. But just because if you say they got it wrong there, just because they got it wrong there doesn't mean they need to get it wrong in Carrick or indeed anywhere else in Ireland. No, that's true. Although I... I think I've got quite an echo happening here. I'm, I don't know what that's about, but it doesn't sound like it's going wrong just in Alberta. There's many jurisdictions where hydraulic fracturing is going wrong. The um, technologies from the industry reports that I have read and the people I've spoken to, the technology is very new. The horizontal drilling, the multi-stage slick water fracking, the chemical-less fracking, the waterless fracking. They're, they're the, the United States Geological Survey has stated last summer they're still only beginning to learn. We're having frack outs in Alberta and British Columbia. The industry has told our regulators that in shallow and deep fracking, they don't know what their fracture propagations do. It's very serious. We just had a very important blowout that happened where a uh, worker was coming home one day and he saw fluids shooting out of an abandoned well and he went in to phone the emergency response line at our best in the world regulator and they didn't answer the phone he had to get a landowner group to help him and what had happened he had to run to find where the fracking crew was they didn't even notice that they had lost their frack control and that it was shooting out into the air and they were about 1,200 meters away. He had to go get them to shut down, okay. and then they had to go clean up the mess. Well, it, there is was this, also another would this, would this, communication this, recently in Alberta where the subsurface difference was 475 meters. So it's very clear this is still an experiment. Never mind just in my backyard. That's in my country. But is, could this, Jessica, be so down to, to poor... We have to, best in the so, world. Sorry, Jessica, just to cut across you. Could sorry? this be down to poor regulation or poor enforcement of regulation? Well, probably both, but we are, we are told that we have best in the world, and the, the industries say that they are allowed, the regulators let the companies regulate, and when they do their, um, if they do break the law, as in the case of my community and or all the regulations in place to groundwater, yes, it is a very important matter of not enforcing regulations. But by then it's too late. If the companies are ignoring the laws and regulations, what good will it do when it's too late? And can a fracture directly into our freshwater aquifers? All right. The damage is done. You can't Tony, repair a fractured aquifer. Tony, all right. we're, we're talking primarily, I think the, the, the primary concern, Tony, all right, for people at this point is about water contamination. And if you lose your water supply, that's it. It's gone. Um, yeah. let, let, let me respond to that. Re, First could of you all, reassure us? As far as I understand, um, the, the, the fields in central Alberta that Jessica was talking about, in general, they're, uh, they're rather shallow. Um, I mean, they're, measured, they're, they're hundreds, a few hundred meters deep whereas the aquifer may be 100 metres deep. In this country, and most fracking operations, there's a huge difference. You, you are fracking reservoirs of 1,000 litrum, I believe it's going to be 1,500 metres, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000 metres. That is a completely different ball game. I would agree that if you're, shallow, if you're fracking very close to uh, uh, an aquifer, you might actually frack. So you shouldn't be allowed, but, is but what you're not, saying? Not when the gap is 1,000 metres. Not when the gap is 2,000 metres. You are never going to frack up there. You never will be able, and, you, and not only will you not be able to do it, you haven't got the horsepower to do it, All right. but you, it's impossible to do it without knowing that you do it. Let's get Jessica's the, the, response. No, let's, hang let's, on. Let's, well, no, no, we're no, running out of time. No, 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 no you've made your point. I want, to get I, a made chance. I want to get Jessica a chance to respond to that. Okay. It's a different situation. He would say, Tony Allright says, in, in Leitrim, that the difference in uh, the gap between where you're drilling and the aquifer is huge, and it's safe. Yes, that's right, but the frack out that just happened in Alberta was very deep. It was on a deep horizontal well, 
And even at 1,000 meters or 2,000 meters, if they have a frack out at 500 meter subsurface difference, that's very scary. And we just found this out. Our regulator and the company that did this did not tell the public. With the comment about industry doing a very bad job with misinformation, I think what needs to be done is when all these incidents happen, they have to be immediately made public. Companies shouldn't be allowed to keep secret when they do these bad events. And I don't agree that in deep areas, water's not at risk. I toured the area where the frack license is for Tamboran, Tamboran and there's, that's a very right. wet area. Cement, how is it going right. to create a good seal, even deep down, with all the water there? Okay, Jessica, we're going to have to leave it there, I'm afraid. We've run out of time. Water is Tony, all right. Water. Thank you very much indeed, Tony, all right. And Jessica Ernst, thank you both. Miriam.